Swedes are amongst the world's largest per capita consumers of electricity. Here, there are many major industries which demand huge amounts of electricity, and hundreds of thousands of Swedish homes are electrically heated. One half of all this electricity comes from nuclear power plants. Forsmark is one of Sweden's four nuclear power stations. The others are Ringhals on the west coast, Barshebeck in Skåne to the south, and Oskarshamn in Småland on the Baltic coast. Three of Sweden's 12 reactors are here in Forsmark, and they provide enough electric power every year to meet one-sixth of Sweden's total needs. This area is rich in traditions. Not far from today's nuclear plant, one of Sweden's well-known iron mills once operated. There were many reasons for choosing this location for the nuclear plant. Regional economic considerations, relative proximity to major power users, and the sea's abundant supply of cooling water. Forschmark 1 and 2 are twin reactors, and they began commercial operations in 1980 and 1981. Forschmark 3 is a bit larger and more modern, and began operating in 1985. Technically speaking, all three are quite similar, and they all utilize the same type of reactor, so-called boiling water reactors. The reactor is located in here. Practically speaking, it is like a very sophisticated pressure cooker, converting water to steam, which then drives the turbines. Here is a cross-section of the reactor, a 27-meter-high vessel built of steel more than six inches thick. Here is the nuclear core of the reactor, where the uranium fuel is inside small pipes called fuel rods. Through the core, from the bottom up, water flows and is heated up by the fuel rods to the boiling point, producing steam. In the upper reactor area, any remaining drops of water are separated from the steam, which then continues on to the turbine to do its work. Here we have long control rods, which can be raised up into the core to either slow down or stop the reaction process. Control rods are used to regulate the reactor. Under normal conditions, the reactor is regulated by these water pumps. The faster the water flows through the reactor, the more power is produced by the uranium fuel rods. Once a year we can look down into the reactor. This is when the reactor is shut down each summer for its revision. To do so, these covers at the very top of the reactor are lifted off. Special cranes lift the fuel rods up out of the core and transport them to storage pools. All this is done underwater. Water is an effective radiation barrier. About one-fifth of the fuel is replaced every year. So the fuel which is removed has been used for five years and is extremely radioactive. Finally, it is shipped out in these specially built transport containers aboard the ship Seagin. Seagin takes the fuel to the central used fuel storage station, located deep in the bedrock near the Oskarsham nuclear power plant. If the reactor's task is to provide the energy to convert water to steam, the turbine's task is to convert this steam into electricity and at the same time turn the steam back into water. This is one of the huge steam turbines. Steam from the reactor rushes through it, releasing its energy. After it is passed through the turbine, it is cooled down by huge amounts of seawater, and the steam then condenses back into water and can go back into the reactor again. This is what happens. The water boils in the reactor, the steam passes through the turbine, is cooled down and pumped back into the reactor. The cooling water comes from the sea, is pumped through the large condensers, 
and descent back out again approximately 10 degrees Celsius warmer than before. Huge amounts of water are involved. Each reactor uses 40 to 50 cubic meters of water per second, the same amount as flows down a medium-sized river. The cooling water from Forschmark 1 and 2 is sent through a tunnel out into the Strait of Ödergrund on the Baltic. But instead of returning it directly to the sea, the water first passes through this so-called biotest lake surrounded by the sea. The animal and plant life of this lake have been subject to scientific observation since a few years before the reactors were put into use to see if the warmer cooling water affected them in any way. The water also contains microscopic amounts of radioactive materials. What effects have been noted? Studies show that water temperature does influence life patterns in the test lake. Certain species thrive, others decrease. Sensitive instruments can detect some radioactivity, but it does not cause any problems. The amounts involved are so small, comparable to one ten thousandth or so of our natural background radiation levels, which are always around us. In a separate part of the lake, two pairs of seals are fed fish from the Atlantic Ocean so they are unaffected by the environmental poisons which now threaten the seals in the Baltic. Every year, young healthy seal cubs are transplanted from here to wild seal colonies in the Baltic. The cooling water from Forschmark 3 bypasses the test lake and is released straight into the Baltic here at the Strait of Uregrund. Back inside the power plant, this is where the reactor is run, the control room, where all reactor operations are controlled. This, for example, is a picture of the core. The screens show what is going on in the reactor, how much steam is being produced, load levels for turbines and generators. Running a reactor is not especially dramatic work. Occasionally, a reactor can suddenly shut down, and then it has to be started up again. That's about all there is to it. Output levels are relatively constant, as nuclear power plants normally run at full capacity. Output levels are adjusted by increasing or decreasing production at other sources, primarily hydropower stations. The control room is also a kind of central nervous system for all of the security and safety systems in the nuclear power plant. The reactor's job is to boil water. It does so using uranium as its fuel which continuously produces large amounts of radioactive substances. The most important aspect of reactor safety is to make sure that no radioactivity is allowed to escape from the reactor. And the best way to guarantee this is to keep the fuel rods immersed in water. During normal operations, water flows continuously through the core. There are several additional and independent systems for supplying the core with water if the regular system should cease to function. But what if something breaks down? One of the large pipes leading into or out of the reactor, for example. If so, steam and possibly radioactivity would be emitted, but they would be contained within the reactor containment. It forms a large room around the whole reactor and it consists of concrete more than three feet thick. The reactor containment can stand up to the toughest treatment imaginable. Even so, all reactors have been equipped with yet another safety measure, special filter systems. If the reactor should break down, the pressure inside the reactor containment could rise. If the steam that has escaped into the containment does not contain any radioactivity, pressure can be reduced by opening this hole. If, on the other hand, the steam was radioactive, pressure can be reduced by letting off steam through the special filter, which will prevent any appreciable amounts of radioactivity from coming outside the containment. This gives Forschmark's modern reactors the highest security ratings. Even if all ordinary reactor systems should break down, and even if this were to result in a core meltdown, no dangerous amounts of radioactivity will escape outside of the concrete containment. On a daily basis, security can mean other things. A nuclear plant is not a delicate operation, but all visitors must pass through the rigorous security checks on their way in. 
and all persons working in the inner plant areas must for their own safety have completed special training courses and must learn all the rules and regulations concerning radiation. In order to enter, you must have special clothes and shoe protectors. When you leave, you must check carefully that no radioactive particles are on your clothes. About 850 people work at Forschmark. Every summer, at revision time, the working staff is doubled. Forschmark is a popular place to work, largely because of the environment. There are no dangerous fumes here, no noise, and the strict safety measures mean that everything is clean and tidy. The government has decided that Sweden will discontinue to use nuclear power after the year 2010. Does Forschmark have a future? Forschmark's major task in the future is to produce a large share of the electricity society needs. To do this, we must maintain or improve the status of the plant. This means that we need competent, motivated personnel. I'm certain that we can employ and retain that personnel thanks to the interesting work we do and the fine environment. If new ways of producing electric power are developed, then there will be even more jobs in Forschmark after the year 2010. Until they are turned off, the three Forschmark reactors will keep running, meeting the same high standards of environmental cleanliness and safety as they do today.